A month ago, I did a road trip up through Wales and then across England, totaling over a thousand miles when everything was said and done. This was partly to spend time with Hasselblad's CFE 100C for a review I was working on, but it was also just to get away on a good old photography road trip, grab a couple of film cameras and set out with a loose plan, leaving most things up to chance. This may be one of the coolest buildings I've come across. From a film photography standpoint, it was a trip that had its fair share of issues, but regardless, it ended up being one of the most enjoyable trips I've had in a while and a great reminder about why I do this and the realities that come with photography. Got some Ontario license plates up here. So much cool stuff in here. Okay, so I just got to the first location that I had marked down here, this really cool old gas station. It was kind of one of the coolest ones I found and uh, a lot of stuff going on out front. So I just ran over, spoke with the owner, this uh, older fella, so friendly, basically said I could stay here all day if I want and uh, make photographs and film and stuff. So this is going to be a really cool location to kick off this trip and uh, going to get some cameras and head over. Some amazing original old pumps over here. I'll go show you. Right, so this is a place here, pretty uh, original looking, pretty amazing. So definitely spend some time here. I'm gonna start with some Portra 400. Really wanna shoot some gold this trip and focus on that, but uh, pretty dark out today. So on this trip, I brought two film cameras with me. The first was a Ritrex 6x6 that I recently had repaired and hadn't shot with since. So I was excited about that one. But I also brought along a new to me Rolleiflex 3.5F as a backup. And as you can see from this first image, it had an issue with the lens that I wasn't aware of. And I'll talk more about that later. Question for you. Question for me, yeah. Yeah. Can I take a picture of you? Yeah. Okay. I'll find a place to set up yeah. and I'll let you know because it will just take a minute. Did I comb my hair? No. <laughs> no. No. You look good as is. As it is. Yeah. It's dark. Shoot a portrait here and then get on the road. Uh, Peter, turn that way a bit. Just, yeah, that, yeah. And then look right into the lens. Look, look into the lens. Yeah. All right, I'll let you know when. So looking right in the lens. Look at the lens, yeah. Yeah. But look away, what? Look into the lens. Look into the lens, yeah. yeah. I have the eyes. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Nice and still. We'll do one more. So any images that I'd shot in the past with the Ridge Track, it seemed like I would always just miss focus slightly. So I made a point to bring an eyepiece magnifier and to use a tripod when I could. And with these portrait images, I was confident that I nailed focus, but as you can see, it almost looks like there's some sort of front focusing issue as it's just slightly out which was a bit of a disappointment as I was really excited about these ones. This is the, my, fa my favorite one yet, just like that. 
Like that. Yeah. There we are. Okay, just a sec. You can see it now, can you on there? Yeah. yeah. It's really neat, huh? Oh yes, my grey F shows up. Oh, you look good. Why is it getting the light from there then? Both windows, it? yeah. Yeah. So that's a bit of a novelty in itself, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm gonna try and do one with this camera. You're not gonna flash that, don't No, we? we'll see, it might work. Oh, it might. See. Yeah, just like that. Oh, come right. Yeah. Come forward just a right. just like that, okay. Um. Oh, it's pretty dark. I'm gonna. Tr I'll shoot one just for, just for fun. So this is the image that I was most excited about from this location, and I did get a digital version of it with the Hasselblad, but I really wanted to see what it would look like with this lens. And without the focus issue, I feel like this one definitely would have been a keeper. Okay, so just got back to the car. It's uh, 11.30, I was there for two and a half hours. So this is gonna make my day a little shorter, but what an amazing place. Peter, the fellow who owns uh, the garage, you know, super nice. Let me photograph the outside, also make some portraits of them. There's some stuff I'm really excited about. Uh, but gonna get on the road because I had a lot planned for today that I'm uh, not gonna get done now, which is completely fine, but I certainly wanna hit some more locations. But uh, what a great way to start the trip. Excited about that one. Put on some miles. Okay, so this was the next spot on my list. This really awesome old Texaco sign in this town. It's a great scene here but the weather is just pretty horrible right now. That's a roll. Okay, just had a little pit stop at this really cool garage where they're just closing up, so I only had a couple minutes, just shot digital, and uh, it's hailing now. <laughs> a little bit of everything today. Uh, gonna head over to the next spot and see what we can find. So this is the spot. It's definitely getting dark though, and um, how many street lights? This is really cool. This old pump, old petrol station. There are some pretty cool moments you can get with headlights illuminating the pump. That one is really cool. Okay, so I shot that one on the Hasselblad digital and I actually am pretty excited about that image. I wanted to photograph this place in the day, but I timed it uh, this night shot with some headlights from a car kind of singling out that pump and I think it could be pretty cool. So um, didn't shoot it on film because the Rolleiflex doesn't have the right uh, thread mount for the tripod plate and then the Ritrek jammed. It won't wind on the second wind to cock the shutter. So. Uh, have no idea what's going on with that, but right now it is down for the count. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna find a place to stay, formulate a plan for tomorrow, and I think that does it for the first day here. It's a busy one. Okay, day two, pretty amazing uh, morning out. Super nice sunrise down here just at the uh, pier. On the other side of these buildings, there's these crazy waves kind of crashing over the break wall. 
seagulls, amazing color. Really nice way to start the day. Um, might shoot a few images, but gonna head up the coast about an hour. There's one place that I had marked out that I wanted to visit. Start there and then head up to North Wales and see what else we can find. Gotta show you these waves before we go. I'm gonna try and not get soaked here, but these are, uh, these are pretty awesome. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Back to the car, back on the road. My arms aching, my heart's pulled into this little offshoot of a town here in the mountains of Wales uh, to turn around and then funny enough there are these couple old pumps on someone's uh, driveway so go check them out you got me and really so I headed back knocked on the door and ended up meeting Steve the homeowner and this is what I love about photography is just these chance encounters and the connections that you make with people and he was so welcoming even giving me a complete tour of his garage and everything he had going on. Right, this is my garage and this is my MG J2 1933. Um, it was on the road about a year ago but cylinder head gasket went and I found another problem with the steering box so uh, it's uh, it should be on the road uh, later on this year. If you stand uh, up this end you'll see all the, the number plates from uh... I'll come back and I'm try not to hit anything here. Yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah. You see all the number plates from Ontario. There we go. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's an old one, that is, that's 1960. Didn't think I would uh, come to Wales and see an Ontario license plate. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And a BC, yeah. and a PEI. <laughs> that's awesome. So what a place, got some Ontario license plates up here. But I uh, just met the owner, he's giving me kind of the tour. So much cool stuff in here, pumps and cars and also has a film camera, which he's going to get, so <laughs> this was a good stop. Definitely make some photos here after. This is more Minolta. Oh, Dynax. Yeah. Nice. It's a very good camera. I bought it for two quid in a charity shop. Can't go wrong with that, can you? And uh, I thought I'm going to go back on uh, uh, analog photography. Yeah. Because I like analog photography. For sure. You can blow it up as big as you like. Yeah. As sharp as anything. Nice. Um, but um, I haven't actually used it yet. I only bought it last week. Oh, okay. It'll. That. Those are. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. That would be like nine, one. Probably nineteen ninety. Sometime in nineteen ninety. That camera. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. Well, that worked out better than I could have imagined. Nice guy, Steve, who owns the place. All sorts of stuff to look at. So we're gonna get the cameras and go back. Yeah, I couldn't believe turn, I turned down this road and <laughs> just to turn my car around and that's what I end up seeing. Okay, there we go. I think it's kind of, sort of going. Okay, get you to look here at the camera. So with the Ritrek down, the Rolleiflex became my main camera. And what I discovered after getting home and developing and scanning the images is that the taking lens has some pretty bad coating damage, which you could only really notice when looking through the lens from behind. And as a result, all of the images that I shot with this camera suffered from pretty bad blooming, but the ones in bright sunlight were definitely the worst. The white coat's very, pretty bright. That's the only, if I, if oh, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. but I might take one of you here with it, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. which could be kind of cool. Even if you just stand right up here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just like that. I'll have to hold it shut because the buttons don't work. Okay, let me see here.
All right, so this recurring theme from yesterday of finding a place in the morning and spending a ton of time there, that was really cool, lots to look at. Uh, shot a little bit of six by six and shot some digital as well, but time to get back on the road and uh, get up to this original place. I think it's like 40 minutes still, so I wanna check off a couple other locations. Lots to see this trip. So just have to take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of the video, which is Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for quite a while now, but I recently decided to do a complete website refresh and I've always enjoyed the clean professional templates they offer, but this time I decided to use their recently launched custom builder called Blueprint. So Blueprint allows you to build your site from scratch, but it also provides you with layout options, color palettes and font pairings. And then it gives you complete control over everything, allowing you to easily change things like gallery styles, image sizes, add thumbnails, drop in new content blocks, or add professional features like an online shop to sell your work. So check out squarespace.com today, sign up for a free trial, test it out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. another find here people are so friendly just like and accommodating basically every place I've gone everyone's just been like yeah photograph whatever you want it's really cool So putting some miles on this thing today, the 3.5F. It's been a backup and now it's a main camera and it feels nice to shoot this again. So just beside the road here, I was driving to my next location and I saw in the corner of my eye up in the woods, what looks like uh, an old abandoned church or something. The overgrown walkway here. So I'm just gonna go and uh, see if I can take a peek. Wow. So this place is huge and has been Abandoned for a while, I would imagine. Oh. Okay, just got inside. <laughs> I figured I'd wait to show you. I haven't even gone in yet, but just looking through this front, this may be one of the coolest buildings I've come across. I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Absolutely amazing. I have never seen anything like this in my travels. This is just crazy. So this is one of those places that, I'll be honest, a little bit sketchy. The floor's caved in at the back over there. Um, not here, but I don't know if I really want a chance walking out there. This is so cool, but I think I'm gonna try and do something, go get my tripod or even just shoot handheld and work from here. There's still some images. These windows are pretty incredible. What a wild place, wow.
this is actually from the uh, road from above it. You can see right in through the roof, which is actually a really cool vantage point. But this is honestly just a wild, wild building. Can't believe this is still here. Once again, back to the car. Majorly sidetracked. Too much stuff out here. That was incredible though. All right, so a little bit of a pit stop. It's been a wild day. I basically started shooting this morning and then didn't stop at all. I got so busy. So just grabbed a coffee, refueled here up on the coast, make my way up uh, to North Wales. Incredible view here with the mountains down at the harbor here. But this has been a really nice trip so far, you know, just to like head out with not really like any set plan or expectations. You know, I've been doing a lot of project work this year, which has been great, but it's been a nice reminder this trip about the importance of just like getting out and doing photography purely for the fun of it. You know, for this one, grabbing a couple film cameras, you know, grabbing a digital, not really worrying too much about like what I'm shooting or what it's gonna be for or anything like that. And just going and making images and exploring and just enjoying the entire process. Uh, obviously I had one camera go down on me, which is a bit of a bummer, but yeah, it's been fun regardless just to go and do this and uh, switch it up completely. So. Still have tomorrow, possibly one more day as well. It's a lot of time left, but right now I'm gonna keep moving. Got one spot kind of bookmarked for this evening. Again, it's probably gonna be dark when I get there. These old pumps and this old gas station. So kind of formulate a game plan when I get there. All right, the pumps are just right over there. This is probably gonna focus on my windscreen here. It is raining, getting dark as well. And this is a very busy road, so this is not ideal. But I think I'm gonna try and find a place to park and get out. This might be one to revisit in the morning. It looks cool. funny there's for whatever reason there's six eggs up there <laughs> so strange so just pulled the car over here I uh, caught a building out of the corner of my eye as I was driving just like yesterday it's another church nowhere near as big uh, but still very interesting so I'm gonna grab the cameras go check it out okay so this the building right here basically right on the road essentially like I said it's quite a bit smaller than the one from yesterday but it's really cool so again floor caved in but there's all this original stuff here it's so fascinating how these places just get left like you got the old lights sockets, pew benches, and even the old uh, organ up there. I would love to go in. So cool. This is out behind it. Like I said, it's not really the biggest place. But I just can't believe this stuff gets left. It's really wild. And I think if we come to this side.
Wow, that's neat. The old fireplace in there. Wow. And then that would be the door in. So this says, this site on which this chapel stands was presented to the Welsh congregation by the Right Honourable George Charles. 1923, not really even that long ago. What a place. These buildings honestly just interest me so much. They're starting to hook me a little bit. So I decided to put away the cameras and the goal for the rest of the day was to make it from Wales all the way over to the east coast of England to one area in particular that I wanted to photograph. And this turned out to be around a 350 mile trip, everything said and done. Okay, so just got over to the coast and looking for a place to crash the night and ended up finding this, which uh, is a lot better than what I was, the place I was coming to find over here tonight to shoot. So uh, just shooting some digital, getting pretty cold, finish this up and then revisit it in the morning, shoot some film. Well, this, you know, just judging by the back of the screen might be my favorite image of the trip so far. I'll have to see once I get it on a computer, but, you know, driving out here, when I got here, I thought I was honestly just going to go and find a place to sleep. I thought today was going to be a bit of a write-off, just a travel day, but you never know what you're going to find. And this is, a, yeah, a really good way to end day number three. Very cool. Right now, though, this camera's almost dead. That camera's almost dead. So I think it's time to uh, pack it in find a place to crash. Welcome to day four, bright and early. It's just heading out to the coast and uh, past this garage that I shot at last night. Some amazing fog and mist out this morning, so just photographed it again, amazing conditions. Pretty excited about those, but gonna try and get out to uh, these amusements, this area I went to last night that I was hoping to, to photograph in the evening and see if some of this uh, lingers around for maybe another hour. Need some coffee. So just wrapped up shooting this morning. Honestly, incredible conditions. I couldn't have asked for any better. And I was a little skeptical when I came this way last night, just because, you know, put on a ton of miles yesterday and didn't do too, uh, too much shooting. But it was really cool to find that location that I shot yesterday evening and this morning. And then just down by the amusements this morning with the fog and the mist was so good. So again, just leaving things up to chance. You know, you never know what you're gonna find. And this has just overall been like a really, really fun trip. You know, keeping it loose, I photographed, you know, old cars, garages, portraits, abandoned churches, amusements. Like, it's been the first time in quite a while where I've just like let go a little bit and not gone out with such like a targeted approach of like, I'm working on this project and this is what I want. And again, not that there's anything wrong with that. I think that can be really good. But this has been uh, just a really nice change to get out and just like focus first and foremost on uh, doing photography for fun. 
So it's been nice, but now I need some coffee, lots of coffee, some food. I need to wake up a little bit, and then I'm gonna start heading in the direction of uh, home, which is like three hours if I were to just kind of beeline it. But again, gonna go back to kind of what we started with this trip, back roads, garages, cars, petrol pumps, see what we can find, and yeah, hopefully end this off. Well, it's already on a high note, but it'd be cool to find a few more cool places to photograph before uh, I call this one a wrap. So overall, this trip was a great reminder that photography is about much more than just the images. And even though I had one camera break and the other caused issues with almost all of the images I made, I honestly could have come away from this one with no photographs and been completely happy with my time spent on the road. You know, someone asked me recently what photography means to me and the best way that I could sum it up is that it's something I do that influences me to look at and experience the world in a way that I otherwise wouldn't. And looking back on this trip, that's the one thing that really stands out. And I think sometimes it's important to just kind of step back and remind yourself why you do something. 